Did that time? Almost. And then do we have the same piece? Put the participant that's like the food and Thank you. Awesome. Oop, please send Zoom link. Oh, geez. Can you send um, Ann a Zoom link? Good morning. I have been encouraged to use my um, stage voice. I'm not a stage person, but if you can't hear me, raise your hand and we will make it better. Uh, I wanted to start with this great clip. Keone has been fantastic uh, sending me stuff on Instagram. Not super great with keeping up with my DMs. And I found about three months worth of all these great clips that he sent. And so I wanted to share this one with all of you to start your Monday. Ready to go. Happy Aloha Monday, guys. I know it's rough rolling out of bed going to school, going to work, but just do it. Somebody got to do it. Stop being with Panty. You can handle whatever Monday throws at you. If if Monday give you an overhand right, slip them, body shot, right to the killy killy. Always stay motivated on Monday. Monday motivation, baby. Guys, love you all. Let's kill this week. Let's smash this week. Always remember, love for think positive, dream big, is far more often. Love you all. Yay, thank you, Kiyomi, for the inspiration. That is amazing. You, you inspire us all daily. Uh, Mitch, one of our coaches and brokers, would you read, once it comes up on the screen, our company mission statement, please? Our mission statement, to build careers worth having, Businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth living, and legacies worth leaving. Awesome. Thank you, Mitch. I um, want to start with the Y4C2Ts. You guys all have a um, trophy in front of you on your desk. And this is for you to give to somebody else and identify maybe one of our belief systems that you've seen in that person. So now's your opportunity to fill someone's bucket. How have you seen? It can be on Zoom. We'll save it for them. Who would you like to give your trophy to today? Can you hear me, Nicole? Huh? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Let's hear it. <laughs> um, I really appreciate calling Sado right now we're in a deal that's been difficult and i appreciate that he has a win-win mentality that we are and also doing the right thing in integrity i'm not going to talk specifically but i just want him to know i really do yeah okay so we'll give that to colin thank you this one is for colin this day i'm going to deal with colin thank you colin hopefully you're on and heard that i'm an ai helping ethan take oh. notes okay anyone else um, thank you jim I like the word Mr. Ray Davis. Yes. yes. Ray, Ray. Okay, thank you. Ray, you get to come get your trophy when next time you're not a thank you for welcome, welcome. I want to add one for Allie. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> your conditioning and keeping us all in, in line and order and always there for us. Thank you. Really thank you. I, I don't know if Steve Landine's on. This one I want to give to Steve Landine. He helped me professionally with um, Heat Seeker, which is a, a metric that we have in looking for agents that might move. And um, he's just a great guy and, and took my coaching right at the beginning. So thank you, Steve. And for everything else. Um, I appreciate yes. you. you. Oh. <laughs> so every time you, whenever you do the meetings and you hear this food, <laughs> And you're not here and there, and then you, saw, and you put a lot of extra effort to it. So thank oh, you. thank you. <laughs> we want you to feel like it's like home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone else? We're giving the trophies to people. Anybody that you would like to award a trophy to, looking at our value system and belief system. I have one more. I am here to um, introduce a guest, uh, Chris Cruz. And this professional. He's a certified financial planner. I was introduced to him, one of our top agents. When I found out he uses Chris and his company, I thought, I want to follow that guy <laughs> because he know, must know what he's doing if he's helping our top agents. 
So um, he's here to speak to us today and he's changed my personal financial future uh, with his help this year and I, he's on island. So I wanted all of you to have the opportunity to meet him, hear about what he offers. And um, yeah, he's impacted a lot of our agents. So we wanted to give him this platform to share how he can see this This is my kid's favorite book when they were little. Look at that. Can you say thank you? No. Can you say thank you? Well, so uh, first of all, excited to be here. I never thought I would uh, do a speaking engagement of any sort. Can you hear me? Speak up, please. I, I never thought I would do a speaking engagement of any sort uh, it wearing sandals. This is not something we do in Dallas. So very glad to be able to do that. Uh, and glad to be here with all of you. And thanks for, for extending an open invitation to my family to having uh, my wife Beth here and uh, Clay and Mia is awesome. Um, so what I can do is I can give you a little bit of background on myself, uh, who I am, how I got to be with Northwestern uh, and build a company that I built. Um, and then I can tell you a little bit about my relationship with Keller Williams and how that came to be. And then I can answer any questions that you have at all about finance uh, as it pertains to uh, personal wealth management uh, being a real estate a real estate agent or professional in finance, I'm happy to do any of that. I don't know what kind of time limit we have. This is sort of all impromptu. I have a text message on Friday, but I'm happy to serve and be of value in any way that I can. So first of all, um, my family and I uh, originated on an island, not this island, uh, a different island. My grandparents and parents immigrated from Cuba to Miami, and that's where I was born. Um, no financial literacy. Uh, no financial uh, background whatsoever. Um, so when I, when I was choosing what to do coming out of college, this was very appealing to me um, because in, in the country that we live in, you're at a massive disadvantage if you don't have a financial plan, if you're not intentional about financial planning. Uh, and because of that, I was very attracted to the career. And at 20 years old, uh, while I was in college in 2010, I started with Northwestern Mutual as an intern. Uh, and that was now going to be 14 years this March. Um, and and it's been fantastic. And for those of you that know nothing about Northwestern, I can get into that some. Uh, the, the, the reality is I'm with them because of the stability, the strength, uh, how long they've been around, all those types of things. Um, but the reality is with a, with a financial planner in any capacity, you're really working on a relationship. So the company is, is not as relevant as a relationship. Um, and why I do what I do, I think is more powerful than the company that I represent or who I work with or why I do it. Um, the Keller Williams tie-in, um, there's, there's some uh, big Keller Williams agents in, in Dallas. And, and when I started, um, I had no one to call. They said, work with successful people who make money and want to talk to you about financial planning. Um, attorneys make great uh, clients. Doctors make great clients. Uh, real estate professionals make great clients. I thought, that's fantastic. I don't know any of those. So where do I start? Um, and uh, I started cold calling attorneys downtown in Dallas, have a lot of attorney clients. Um, and then working with a couple of people uh, in different capacities in Dallas. You might know some of their names, Susan Hubeck, Mike Brody. Uh, these are people that you know I built some relationship and connection with and attract me and brought me into working with KW. Uh, and I tell people KW is a lot like Northwestern, just different industries, the culture, the values, all those things align. Um, and then all of a sudden started coming to Maui with, with Beth uh, and I met Dean Otto. And this was uh, probably gonna be seven or eight years ago, coming up pretty soon um, and started calling on him. You know, I thought, wow, he's a cool guy. He's got a great accent. You know, why not make him a client? Uh, and eventually, you know, he, he, uh, he became a client. I've been working with him for many years now. I don't think he'd mind me saying that. Um, and there are several others that are part of your, your brokerage that have been clients, uh, some for longer than others. Um, but I've been very fortunate to build a relationship here on Maui. What I can tell you is from my professional uh, experience, there's not a whole lot of holistic financial planning opportunities on Maui. Um, it's few and far between. Um, so part of uh, what has turned into uh, you know, gathering clients and, and building relationships has kind of become a little bit of a passion project too. And in, in that, you know, financial literacy is so important, especially in the industry that you are all in. Uh, we focus a lot on risk management planning first, life insurance, disability insurance, you know, one in five foreclosures are because of disability. 
um, being a business owner, you know, I think you become a real estate agent very much like becoming a financial advisor. Um, you know, they don't tell you you're going to own a business. You know, you're not just a real estate agent, you own a business. And so that brings with it a lot more things, a lot more complexity. Um, and so with that having been said, I, I mean, I have a couple of things that I can go over, uh, a couple of slides that I can go over if you'd like, or I can just answer questions, or I can do none of that. And I can I can take my my lay and, um, and, and move on. But I was grateful to be here. Very glad, uh, Sasha, uh, to be here. And, you know, I, I worked with Lisa before that. So it's been a long time that I've been sort of around Keller Williams. And that's not the only brokerage I work with either here on island. Actually, I would say it's maybe 50% Keller Williams. The other 50% is all kinds of other professionals uh, in the real estate world. Um, so I can go through the solutions. So uh, life insurance, broker services, which is investments, uh, annuity planning, um, disability income, wealth management, long-term care. These are all things that you know are part of a, a financial plan. Um, and I think you see it. Like there's been a couple of events here on Maui in the last five years that have totally shut down business, you know, and, and you find out like how strong someone's financial plan. And the reality is, and the, the reality is, you know, uh, the economy does that too. 2008, the same thing. So it's, while things are going well and you're making hay and the sun is shining, what are you doing to make sure when things inevitably are not going that way, you're in a strong position? Um, so these are the service, some of the services we provide. We have two engagement options. Um, we do fee-based planning, which is, uh, we're able to, to do a comprehensive plan from top to bottom. Uh, we can look at an estate plan. We can help you build everything out with your business plan. We do business valuations. Uh, it's a one-time $5,000 fee uh, for an exist for a new client, and it includes all this. We're actually raising that fee in January. Uh, and then we also offer solutions-based planning, which is more of what that first slide was. Sometimes people come to us and they say, you know, it, it's, it's sort of aspirational for me to do a comprehensive fee-based plan where I am right now, but I know I haven't done any life insurance planning. I know I have no savings or retirement planning, and I'd love to have a conversation. We do offer solutions-based planning for that purpose. Um, and the goal is, you know, to be, to be able to meet clients, you know, where they are um, and have more opportunity for financial literacy and, and opportunity for people to, to build successful financial futures. I see some of you in the audience, you know, younger than others, and that's a key of benefit. You know, the younger you are when you start, the better, of course, but there's no age too late and there's no better time than now to start with these types of things. So with that having been said, I'm happy to answer any questions. I don't know how much time you have allotted for me, but happy to. That's one of my assistants. You can hear them in the background. <laughs> Um, I, some of you know my story. I don't have a huge financial gang. I'm working on it. I started in my 40s in real estate. And um, it started last year without disability insurance, without life insurance, without long-term care. And when I saw that, I like, I'm going to have a professional help take care of me because like in real estate, you offer those professional services. If I try to go on my own, I'm struggling. And so this year, thank you. Thankfully, to the help that I've got now, I'm set up life insurance, disability, um, long term care. This event is an advertisement, more like we've been talking about wealth. That's the thing I love about our company. It's about more than real estate. And if there's anything we can do to help you guys position yourself, um, we'd love to open it up for questions for Chris. Yeah. Did you have a question? Uh, CJCruise.com is, is probably the easiest uh, way to get there. And um, if any, I, I didn't put any contact. Like she's, This is not like a solicitation in any sense. I didn't put any contact information on there, but you're welcome to send me an email. It's my first name, Chris.Cruz, C-R-U-Z at NM.com. And I'm sure Sasha can get you, you know, uh, NM, Nancy Mary, NM.com. So what are all of you seeing? I mean, are, are you? Oh, oh, yeah. What most people's biggest mistake with financial planning? That's a great question. And somebody already answered it. That's the right answer. Um, not doing it. I mean, I think so often, and, and I, I think this is applicable to your industry too. People worry so much about like, what's the commission? Or is it the perfect way to go? And what happens is they sort of like delay, but they delay for years and years and years. And you know, now you're 10 years or 15 or 20 years into your career. And the reality is, and it's a it's a, a quote by um it's a quote by um gosh, I can't remember his name right now. General Patton, you know, a, a plan that's not completely designed but executed today is much better than a plan perfectly designed, executed in the future. 
And that that speaks to all of this. I mean, it, it's better to start making incremental progress than waiting for the perfect moment to have you know revolutionary progress because it just it never comes. You know, it's 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 never a perfect time. It, it's never ideal. Um, and that's a great answer. I mean, it's it's not about it's about not planning and or waiting for the perfect moment. And in your business and your world, I kind of think about it as like not using a realtor, like for sale by owner. You know, like that doesn't work in my opinion. I, you know, I, it doesn't work. Um, there's a reason your profession exists, and it's kind of the same for us. So much of what we do is behavioral. You know, talking about your deal that's 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 being worked on just a second ago. I mean, it's behavioral. It's human nature. It's figuring out how to work through those things, and it takes a professional to do that. Yeah. So what I see here that's a huge problem is a lot of people don't think about long-term care insurance. Mm -hmm. So I had two clients, they were older, downsizing. One of them had long-term care insurance and was paying like $300 a month. Mm -hmm. And the other one was paying probably $6,000 a month at the same location. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I'm interested in talking about. And yeah. Time, yeah, of course. Well, and so there's a lot of benefits. It, it goes back to one of the statements I made earlier. I mean, you are your own business. So so with that comes some benefits too. I mean, if you worked as a, as a W-2 employee, you have life insurance, you have disability insurance, you have a 401k. These are things that as a business owner, you have to seek out and then put in place. Um, and so speaking to that on the long-term care, there's even tax deductions. I mean, you have to, you know, check with your certified uh, public accountant. That's not me. I'm not a tax advisor. Um, even though we focus a lot on tax mitigation and making sure that you're saving tax efficiently and effectively, um, there's some deductions available to you for something like long-term care, um, because the reality is, like, the federal government knows, like, that's not a. They don't have a solution for that. You know, printing more money won't be able to be the solution for that. So. Um, privately funded plans are, are very, uh, very uh, encouraged. Yeah. Other questions? Oh, don't, not, maybe don't have a huge savings out there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm in uh, North Dallas. Okay. Here, have you heard of Frisco? No, oh, but Frisco. I have so Oh yeah, my office is in Addison, okay. which like is borders. Yeah. That's where they're from. That's awesome. That's cool. Small world. Yeah, there you go. Small world. Small world. Yeah. Um, what else? Any other questions or thoughts? Questions or? in the chat? Anybody? Yeah. Well, I just appreciate you taking time. Dry, he drove from the West Side this morning just to be here for yeah. us. Um, and again, I, I try to vet and be very careful who I put in front of you guys. And as he has helped our number one agent and many others, um, I thought it would be great for you guys to just meet him personally while he's on island, reach out at your convenience to get any kind of help that you want. It changed my life. I mean, I I think having a plan is just gives you that security in mind. Um, and I, I didn't have a bunch to go invest. I didn't take advantage of the broker side, but if you do, um, they offer those sort of secret and you could just share me with them. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. And, and I mean, my like key takeaway for all of you is like starting to save money and just don't expect everything to go well. I think that's that's like one of the other, so maybe the, the second biggest uh, thing that catches people off guard is, I mean, you plan for things to go well, and when they don't, it sets you back considerably. Um, and there's there's no place too small to start. I mean, it, there's there's lots of opportunities to be able to improve um, situations and, and, and the trajectory that you're on. And our goal is to be able to break it down to where you can take action. I mean, that's such a huge part of what we do. Right. It's not to show you this like massive, you know, save thousands of dollars a month to start. It's to help work on baby steps. So, um, yeah. So what would be like something you start? So 5,000 is for the fees. Mm -hmm. How much more would you need to start up? So the way the, the, way the fee-based plan works is that like, you're hiring us. So that's like a consultative fee, right? So it's not, that's not, that's going and, and evaluating your entire financial picture showing you a projection and you're hiring us for 12 months. So we come in and consult as much as you want through that entire 12 month period on anything you want consultation on. And the, the end goal of that is to give you a plan you're able to use for the rest of your life. Um, as far as, you know, I, I think your question might've been rooted in like, what, where can you start like saving and those kind of things? Yeah, or like how much should you invest? So you'd have to have the 
the five thousand for a consultation fee, but then what's the the minimum amount that you can have to start? So if you go back to the the slide, the first slide, so back to that's what I normally look like there. <laughs> And we can go through some of this if it's helpful. I don't know. But so so for some of these things, um, you know, wealth and income projection, education planning, retirement planning, if there's specific individual items that you want to work on, it doesn't have to be a five thousand dollar fee and a, and a whole comprehensive plan. That's that's to hire us to do a full plan. Sometimes people come to us and say, you know, I have this investment account. I haven't looked at it in years and I just need somebody's help figuring out what to do with it. Or sometimes people come to us, like what you just said about long-term care. It's like, I know there's benefits as a business owner to having long-term care. I don't know what they are. Could you help me with that? That's not a $5,000 fee to do that. The $5,000 planning engagement is hiring us because uh, like Sasha said, so I'm a board certified financial planner. We have multiple board certified financial planners on our team. So we operate as fiduciary. So any recommendations we make, they're fiduciary recommendations. So the planning engagement is bringing us in as a fiduciary to your entire financial plan versus if you came to us and said, I'd like to start saving money. I have a thousand dollars a month. What do I do? You know, we could talk about, you know, specific items and things you could do from there. But a lot of it's going to be foundational on risk management. So life insurance, disability insurance. I mean, in real estate, one in five foreclosures, I don't know if you knew that, maybe you did, but one in five foreclosures happened because of disability. So that's one of the biggest things. Like when we talk to People that are in the real estate world, you know, unless they're independently wealthy, um, that becomes an, a big issue, right? And disability insurance would be very easy to get, um, and it's very inexpensive, and it's a great place to start in a financial plan. That was a good question. I didn't have anything to answer your question. It could be less. It yeah, it could be less. Insurance. It could be less. Yeah, it could be less than a thousand. Yeah. And, and, and our goal is not to, like I said, I mean, this is like a solicitation. It, it's not, it's If we can be helpful, feel free to reach out. Um, this is sort of like a passion project a little bit, you know, deduct our trips out to Maui. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, I love, I mean, I love the spirit of being here. I love that. And, and there's there's huge opportunity. I mean, the reality is like there is the, the managing director for Northwestern Mutual is a very good friend of mine. He's coming uh, out here to visit us on uh, next Saturday. There's not even a Northwestern office. What's that? In Oahu. Yeah, he's in Oahu. Yeah. Um, there, there isn't even a, a Northwestern office here. There's not a whole lot of presence of any sort for, for financial planning here. There's like a Fidelity office and some Merrill stuff, but there's there's not, there's no competition. So what ends up happening is either people don't do it at all or they kind of just take what's here and then you know, years and years and years pass. Um and it's because there's not an opportunity. Nobody's going to wake up and, and decide like, today's the day I need to talk about any of the stuff we're talking about. Because a lot of it is deferred gratification. Anything else? Chat. Yeah. The base fee changes based on the complexity of your situation. What kind of situations would warrant an increase in the base? Um, so if we're working um, with, a, with a company, multiple partners, we're doing evaluation, the fee could be higher than 5000 um, the other thing I would tell you too, and this is maybe helpful for this group, I'm just kind of trying to read the room on some of the questions, but for an existing client, the fee is actually $2,500 for a full plan. So for some of you that are thinking like, I know I need to do one thing or another, you can do that first and you can always come back later and add the plan in the future. Thank you for being sure, here. Happy if to help. If you have any other questions, um, I... I think most of you know my story. My husband was um, on a business trip in London at 42 and one of those double long buses hit him and he had checked the box to have insurance and that literally pays our mortgage um, every month because he checked the box and we happen to have disability insurance. It's fully disabled and we don't like to think like that, but I, I would love for all of us to keep that conversation going. We want to make sure you guys can take care of yourself and your family. And so, um, yeah, appreciate Chris, you being here. Yeah. Oh, not one more. Sure. Is there a minimum amount of cash assets that, you know, a prospective client of yours has to have? Um, no. Okay. But I mean, for all of you, I would recommend having three to six months minimum of just living expenses in cash. Um, and then as a business owner, probably closer to 12 months, ideally. Um, because what that's going to do is put you in a stronger position for the upflows and the downflows, depending on, you know, great months and then not as great months, just kind of part of the deal. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Not hiring. We work on especially out. for us. Yeah. So of course. What is the maximum? So you could do a SEP IRA and it goes all the way up to 60,000. Okay. Um, but I mean, what I would want for all of you, like if you told me, hey, we have never done any planning and you said, we're going to do exactly what you say. I want everybody here to have some sort of life insurance, some sort of disability insurance, some sort of what's called disability overhead exp expense, which covers your business expenses if you become disabled, and then a SEP IRA. Like those are, a Roth IRA is, is not deductible. So yeah, six thousand is the limit. Yeah, but but a Roth IRA, the problem with that is you don't get any deduction in the current year. So a lot of times people are wanting the deduction on that, and then you can do you can do tax free savings in other vehicles that have higher limits. The sixty thousand itself is that the max? Yeah, it's or close to the max. Yeah, you can do less. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But as a as a business owner, and I look at it the same way for me, like I have to make sure that my financial plan is is in a good place to be able to show up for my clients long term. Because half the battle is you got to be there 20 years from now to do all these things. And it's the same for you. You're going around acquiring these clients. You're going around helping them get properties. You want to be there for them in the future. You have to be financially stable to be able to do that into the future. But it's, it's important, you know, and I think it's often neglected because, again, you get into a business and you, you're not salespeople, you know, you're business owners. And that's like a different way to look at it. And I, I think it's important and that develops over time for people at different paces. But there was this question earlier, like how we live on, like we want to start on something. Mm -hmm. Like do you think you, um, having like a stock system? So what I would do is like, if you want to do a phone call and I can talk about your specific situation in some detail, I'm happy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but Putting money into stocks, it, it kind of depends. Like that's really broad, you know. Um, it, and 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 I, what I find is that most most of the clients that we work with, what they want is they want something that's going to have more stability. It doesn't mean it won't be stocks, but they want there to be stability and structure to it. Um, so that becomes very important too. Yeah. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, if if anybody wants to follow by email, I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. I'm glad to be here again. I, I know I, I've, met, I've seen some of you before on Zoom, I think. Two or three years ago, I spoke uh, with Lisa, and I think we sent some books and did some things like that. Um, so I love coming out here. I love being a part of this, and and hope you all have a fantastic end of 23 and a great start to 2024. What's your favorite book that you would all say to all of us to read about? Um, well. I would definitely say The Richest Man in Babylon. Oh, yeah. It's a great book. Okay. If you haven't read it. And like, yeah. Yeah, it's the Richest Man in Babylon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a highlight. Thank you guys for coming. Sure. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. Two. Thank you. Awesome. I hope that was helpful. Thank you. Also, um, this is an Excel. It's the only type of little. Thank you. 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 Thank there is it, it all depends. Like what I would tell you, like if you have any of these type of questions, just send it to the email and we'll send them. There's no charge to do it all. And the purpose is not to put our speed, right? Yeah. The reason we do the, the, the planning speed, and that's been the last couple of years, is people reflect what they wanted is to be able to ask whatever they want for a set period of time. And so we added that, but there is no like speed for discussion or anything like that to reach out. Uh, um, when we do offer an application, we are going to be able to report the to be on that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That, so, uh, Nicole had the question um, is there, is it percentage based or fee based? What I would say, get an interview. It didn't cost anything. You can kind of understand how he could help. Um, so, so we wanted to say a big thank you, RJ, to special people who helped the party. 
Uh, shout out uh, Miranda for your tree. It's amazing and beautiful. Thank you, Miranda. Falling um, was foundational to securing our location and planning. Uh, we are so thankful for her work. Ray and Allie were the core of getting everything going. Celeste showed up um, hours early, brought a bunch of flowers, and made all those arrangements. So thank you, everyone, for coming. It was awesome. We're already looking at venues for next year. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Um, now, we're outperforming. We like to share these. And feel free to comment, Keone. Uh, these are the stats from our board. Hearing a lot of background noise on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, and Steve. Yes. <laughs> Thank you to Steve. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, the fans are the background noise. Sorry about that. Just take a look how we're comparing. Close production list side, we're up 77%. Wow. Right? Ram's only up eight. This is, again, just showing. And um, year over year, 34 we wanted to remind you guys, um, uh, uh, congratulate those top 20 agents. If you're in the room, would you please stand to be recognized? We have Kayla, top 20, in the room. Do I see anybody else? On Zoom, congratulations. Love to see that. Fun to see some new faces on there. Annual dues, anybody not pay their annual dues yet? There's another fee. We've got about 18 agents we're gonna be calling. Don't forget to pay those. And um, who can tell me what we need to do with renewal cycles? What's the deal with that? Renewal cycle for CE credits. Every other year, it'll cost 20 more credits, or 20, 20, 20 credits, credits, 20 credits. And what else is special? Yeah, so we have four. Tell me that. Four A, four B, and when does we get to see four B? Yeah, if you haven't started, it's something to be thinking about. Does anyone know the deadline for applications coming up? It's 2024, even number years. So by November 30th. So I'm just giving you a heads up. We got a year. Uh, if you want a fun class, we had a blast last time. It's only 30 bucks. Realtor Safety, February 22nd. I'm teaching that. Would love to have all of you guys in the room. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that round. 30 bucks for three credits. And you can scan there if you'd like to join. We had a great time. It's actually, they're changing the time to one. Um, I'll get the right time. They had asked me to change it, but yeah, we had a blast last time and it was fun to have, um, Brandon and Kathy Uu in the room. Any comments on Hawaii one app from Ray? Is that, is that, oh, that's not during, uh, family reunion. No, it's right before All right. family reunion. Yeah. Cause I, I leave like 25th that next week. If you're not, if you don't have a Hawaii One app, get with Ray. All of our reserving conference rooms, everything's on there, and it keeps getting better. Um, has anybody listened to this podcast yet? It's brand new. Episode eight dropped. Yeah, dropped this morning. Uh, it's been great. So if, if you want to just to feed your mind and get inspired by agents all over the country, it's once a week. I'm list, I'm about halfway through what's been posted so far. And we're encouraging people to listen in because we're hearing stories of how agents do it differently from all over the country. And maybe something will inspire all of you. All right, Nerdy 30, Ray. Woo. Every Thursday, 5.30 to 6, uh, Carrie and I get together. It's basically a one-on-one -on -one tech workshop. So if you are interested in developing more skills or tips and tricks through command, uh, join us every Thursday, 5.30 to 6.00 for Nerdy 30. Hey. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, Jim. I'm a computer nerd, and I got a lot out of that class. Oh, 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 oh. Don't work my time. Jim, 50 years in tech, said he's a computer nerd and doctor and got a lot out of it. So if it's worth his time, it's definitely worth all of ours. And thank you for making it accessible to those that work uh, other jobs. Thank you to our board. Please join. 
uh, a community where our goal is to have 10 agents in every community. So we're all engaged. Find an agent that you'd like to learn from. Uh, Wendy is starting a new community of wellness. Super excited about that. We had about three agents sign up. Again, the goal is to get everybody in the room into a community. Does any of our board like would like to speak to your community at all? I'll speak. Okay, Jonathan, yes. Come on up here, please. Hey everybody, Jonathan here, speaking on culture. Uh, as you know, we've got a good set of values that we model after here at KW. And culture is really everything we do and how we do it. Um, so the how becomes really important in real estate. It's, it's, it's obviously, as we know, it can be complicated and tricky. There are ups, there are downs. But if we are community, like if we support each other and we live in a really positive, good way, then it makes it a lot better. So our culture committee basically designs events definitely quarterly, but in 2024, we we're hoping to do like monthly. We have a split between service and kind of cultural events and fun events that we can do just to socialize outside the office. So in 2023, we did a whale watch. Uh, we, we've done the um, Holly Cow Cow uh, almost in the last several months, and we're going to continue doing that. And we've done like uh, beach cleanups, and we went bowling. So anybody who's interested in being on the committee, we we decide the events that we're going to do and kind of put them together. And we also can just, um, as a general note, focus on our culture. Obviously, this past year we endured one of the you know greatest tragedies the islands has ever faced, and a lot of turning the office into a hub for support and donations and checking on agents, all of that is connected to culture. So um, we don't wanna just be there when there's trouble, we wanna do it all year round so that we're just a really strong community here. So I wanna thank everybody that's already been a part of it and anybody that this resonates with, just reach out to me or scan that and join the culture committee and we're gonna have a lot of fun in 2024. Hey, thank you. And I forgot to do a shout out to Steve. Thank you, Ray, in the chat uh, for Steve being our MC at the um uh, the holiday party. That was awesome. Thank you, Steve. All right. Um, where are we at? Next up. Oh, Palhana Potluck. Teresa, would you like to share? Okay, this is going to be our last Tahana of 2023. I hope you guys all can come. We're going to have a cookie exchange. Please make them, uh, to quote one agent, I won't quote her name, edible, um, <laughs> which means I'll be shopping versus baking. Uh, we're going to have a pizza, drinks, talk story, and plan for our next year. So I really hope you guys can come. That's Friday at 3 o'clock. Oh, there's a white elephant gift, um, 15 to 20 dollars. But if you really want to make it a white elephant, make it five. So basically something that can be reused, whatever. It's a white elephant, right? And we'll do that exchange as well. Um, anything else? No, that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Teresa. All right. I have um shot glasses in our market center colors. I'm interested if anybody knows the new single family residence median price. What is yes, Miranda. You know uh, condo is? Now I condo. Yeah. Median? Median? Condo? 890. 890. Close. Close. And uh, CUNY. Go for it. You're here. <laughs> Okay, everybody. Talking about CE, do you know why CE comes out, the core class comes out in July or August? Do we have time to do it? <laughs> they revised it because that's on the contract. Dated. It's because your legislators end in May. They're, the governor has time to sign by July or veto. And then all those bills get put into core A or B. Now you know, the more you know. All right. Okay. Um, also, don't forget, don't repeat classes. You can do anything from 20, 
2020, yeah. right? Yeah. Anything yeah. prior to 2020, you can take again. Anything you've taken from 2020 to now, do not take because they won't get credit and you've done that class for nothing. Okay, we're going to go over to oh, another thing. Your CMAs. Make sure, make sure you 25 people out there in Zoom land. You do your CMAs at the beginning, not at the end, because they will get rejected. And I don't know how you're going to fix that. But a good practice is if you're doing the listing, get them to sign that when they when they sign the rest of the listing packet, right? If you're doing it on the purchase contract, get them to sign it when you're doing the purchase contract. Your brokers are going to try to help you, remind you to do that. But at the end of the day, it's your responsibility. So make sure you do that. Okay. Who knows in your MLS rules what section 1 3 is? You guys are going to lose. That's right. Yeah. Um, it has to do with listings. Close, but the opposite. Exempt listings. Exempt listings section 1.3. Uh, filing of an office exclusive exempt listing shall be accomplished by written instructions applicable to RAM signed by the seller that he or she does not desire the listing to be included in the MLS and available to other participants. The blank MLS exempt listing form shall be provided by RAM. The seller's written instructions and copy of listing contract shall be submitted to RAM with 48 hours, two days, two business days, that is, after receipt uh, by the listing broker. Failure to notify RAM within two business days shall result in a late reporting fine. See Schedule A for a fine price. Okay, so don't forget to do that if you are having an exempt listing, right? Even if it's for a few days or whatever. The other trick is to have your broker sign at the end when you're ready to put it into MLS, right? Next week, we're going to talk about sold... Before list. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so we got 890 condo. Days on market, single family. What is it as of this month? I mean, the new reported st stats. 60. Anybody else? 94. Zoom, 94. Days on market. For single family, 122. What 11? Yeah. When you're talking to your people, um, I love what Ray said. DMA stands for cover my A. So definitely get that done. Uh, so that's four months of inventory. And then um, what about condo? Days on market condo. 94. 94. <laughs> and Jim, you know, Wow, that is, that's useful. Okay, so some of you guys know Todd Hudson. I got the opportunity to interview him. I myself am looking for an investment property. You know how many percentage of agents actually own an investment property in NAR? 8%. Like we we are in the industry and only 8% of us own investment properties. That's a personal goal of mine. So I asked an inventory expert, Todd, what what advice would you give right now? And what do you think he said? What advice did Todd? Hudson, inventory specialist, gave me regarding buying a investment property right now. If I was looking, say again. Buy out of state. Buy what it is. Buy out of state. Buy out of state. Yes, that would be more accessible. 
I love this. He said, Sasha, I have a seller finance portfolio. I have seller financing 6%, 20% down. So look for people who are offering seller financing. That is really interesting. So for your clients. And then I love this. 5% seller finance. Oh, 5%. Yeah, okay. And it's uh, vacation rental property. Yeah. Yes. So if you can do that. Okay, so that goes to my next question. And for the chat, what, what's the best deal right now in Kihei? In your opinion. Yeah. And what's your hot buy? Anybody? I like Ruby's KK Gardens. They're willing to negotiate. It's 5% seller carry. A one bedroom step away from the beach or oh, I know that's illegal. Um, from the beach, great property, uh, low maintenance fee. Awesome. Teresa says Ruby's property, best deal. Anyone else? You have an opportunity to pitch yours if you want. What's the best deal that you've seen when your clients ask? Or if somebody shows up like Chris, hey, what's the best deal right now? I like Maui Bayes. I'm not saying it's cheap by any means, but it has the lock-off room. Yeah. So you get two and one in a way, and the people are loving that Yep, that's one of the things Todd said too. It's one of his favorite complexes for that. Awesome. I'd add Sarah Fox's new listing at Cam Sands. It's below the, the same uh, cost for similar units. It's updated. Um, they've done a great remodel on it. Um, great view. Um, really pretty. Awesome. If you have a hot deal with seller financing, come let me know. I'll, I'll put something together. Uh, great. Thank you, guys. I wanted to read to you uh, from Shift, page 15. It has to do with, I'm so excited for you guys because what I know, having been another brokerage, they're not teaching their agents how to take over market share right now. So as the market shifting, we have an incredible opportunity. And this is the graph on page 15. If you have 20% market share right now and you just hold as the market shifts, you gain market share. So let's say the inventory goes down, the amount of sales goes down, and you keep yours the same, you can increase your percentage of market share. So that's my goal for you guys. Let's let's take over and you know stay strong this next year. And from page 15, it says, this is a survival strategy. Adapt to the realities of the new downshifted market quickly. Change what you need to do. Build a fortress about what, around what you have, at least at the very least, this means maintaining your number of sales while the market declines. So if you look at last year and try to do just the same this year, the net effect will actually be an increase in your market share. When the natural lag plays out, you'll be positioned at an advantage. So we're here to support you guys. We, we are excited about the opportunity that's available. Um, okay, I think on next slide, where are we at? Oh, is that it? Nope. Oh, reminder. Uh, marketing license requirements. Send it to Tony, oh, and if you don't get a response, Keone can help you. Um, and please remember, TCPA compliant. I actually found out because I contact other agents. This is something that was new to me. I had a VA go through all the real estate agents. Sixty percent, sixty-six percent were on this list. So I, I like you, have to be very, very careful. When I'm reaching out, it's like $5,000 fine per instance. So just if you have to do it yourself or have someone scrub your list before you call and text. Anything else to add? Anyone want to share your listing? The now's an opportunity on Zoom. What's the best way to scrub that? Do not call.com, .gov. I'll pull it up right here. It should be on the inter internet. I do. Okay, can let's you, see. Can you hear me? Yeah, do not call.gov and you put the number in. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. I'm I'm here now, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm at Kulakani 112, new price uh, 789. It's a uh, one bedroom, 499 square feet. And the sellers are motivated. So I'm here every day till it sells. That's why. 
I'm not there. Love it. Love right. it. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, fun fact. Um, before we go, I'll let you guys see if you have any other listings you want to highlight. Anybody know the most downloaded app of 2023? Hello? Any other idea? Pornhub.com. What? Redfin. Yeah. Redfin? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's Zora. Where did it go? Here, shop last with Zora. How many downloads do you think TikTok had? In 2023. Download. 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 Spent. 60. 60. Anybody else? I'm not. 275. Oh, more than that. Yeah. 100. 100. 100. Out of the whole month, people spend an entire day on TikTok. 24.5 hours. Like 20? 24.5 yeah. is the answer. Like out of the month, an average user spends a full day plus. And mm -hmm. so the, the point being, if everybody's on TikTok, uh, it would behoove us. What they said was, look at your competitors who are doing well in real estate and just follow three to five of them just to see what's going on. Yeah, Jim. Speaking of age of TikTok. Right. They said there's a perception that it's all teenagers. There's a significant number of 20 to 29-year-olds that are still using it and buying homes. So, yeah, just wanted you guys to know, Teresa. Yeah, if you're going to do TikTok, please remove all your financial information, like your bank accounts and things, off of your phone. Because yeah. TikTok is owned by the Chinese, and the Chinese are monitoring. So it's not exactly a safe app. You need to have it in a controlled environment. Yeah, yeah, I heard the same thing. I'm just passing on the information that I heard on our post. So you do have to be very, very careful. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thing? Hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah, TikTok is oh, a five. I just wanted to. I just <laughs> wanted to give a shout out on my um, listing up in Kula 200, which is very rare to come on the market. Um, it's close to everything, but you've got an entire two-acre lot, uh, very usable, uh, flat. Um, with a nice ocean view. So if anybody has a client, let me know, please. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, uh, Bill said TikTok is a privacy nightmare. That's exactly what I had heard as well. Um, so yeah, we're all always going to be careful. I'm just passing on what I learned. Well, even if you delete it, it still keeps remnants on your phone. So just yeah. So those are the permissions that we just agreed to. Yeah. All righty, guys, thank you for coming into our breakfast, and we'll see you um, next Monday. Thank you, everybody.